Matthew Lippert is our next speaker. He is the agriculture agent in Wood and Clark counties. Matt has previous experience in the dairy nutrition industry in which his current focus is in Wood and Clark counties, has been in dairy production, dairy cattle nutrition, dairy genetics and farm management. He works closely with grower organizations, developing educational programs and newsletters. Matthew has a Bachelor of Science in Dairy Science and Agriculture Economics and a Master of Science in Animal Breeding from UW-Madison. And so with that, we would like to welcome Matt today. So uh, this price and corn silage topic, uh, here we are in the middle of February. I think we're all kind of longing for nicer weather. So this first slide here is just uh, looking at uh, what kind of, we had a glorious harvest last fall. Good weather, no mud, and so good crops, at least in this part of the state. But uh, I think the thing is that this question comes up, how to price corn silage, typically, right when we're, we're uh, making this stuff, you know, like, oh, all, all of a sudden this field is available and we have to hurry up and rush and get as simple an answer as possible for these thumb rules and how to price it. And so I think that's why um, we don't always use the best thumb rules and I wanna talk about how we could do a better job. Next slide. So, if all the farmers in Wisconsin, and I know we have uh, probably folks from out of the state, but if everyone in Wisconsin planted their corn silage, not their corn, their corn silage in one field, I did the math and it's just about half a township short of our largest county in the state of Wisconsin, Marathon County. So if you could imagine the amount of corn silage that's made in our state, it's right there even with all the forests, uh, urban areas, freeways, state parks, other crops, we make a field of corn silage that big in our state. So I think it's really important to get it right about uh, um, how we price the stuff and we can advance. It's actually about a million acres that in the state, plus or minus different years, do it again. And we are the number one corn silage producing state in the nation. So uh, uh, we have a lot at stake here. Next slide. So just doing some quick background math. Uh, a lot of you are already here with this, but a lot of times you'll hear this thing that corn silage is about half grain. And uh, another one, uh, if we look at lab results, corn silage is about 35% starch. So we have to assume that 35% starch to assume that corn silage is about half grain. And in fact, you know, there's a fair amount of corn silage that exists that has less than 30% starch or corn silage that's over 40% starch. So they would be greater or less than grain. But our average corn silage is really close to half grain. And then I think another fun thing is that we usually say the ideal target moisture is this 35% dry matter for various reasons. So we got 35% starch, 35% dry matter. And then we get a ton as fed feed. We come up with uh, 240 pounds of starch, 45 pounds of starch per ton in corn silage. And then if you back figure uh, grain being 72% starch, 85% dry matter, 56 pounds per bushel, we come up with that our average corn silage has about seven bushel of grain in it per ton. And that's a number that we see quite often. Of course it can vary, but it's the most frequent uh, distribution is right around seven bushels per ton. You can also use this sort of thing if you combine the yield per acre uh, times the bushels per acre, you can come bushels per ton, you can come up with bushels per acre, hit the advanced slide one more. And uh, since corn silage is harvested immature, uh, typically at half milk, that number uh, is, uh, if you would let it get the black layer to be a grain crop is, uh, here I showed 90% factor. It's, it's uh, um, some of these yields that uh, if you do these conversions on corn silage seem like pretty low yields, but you have to boost a little bit because you did give up some potential in your yield. Next slide. 
So when I was getting ready for this talk, I did some uh, background research and I found that our colleagues at the University of Missouri have a thumb rule that you should uh, use uh, eight to 10 times the price of a bushel of corn to be your price of uh, corn silage. Clean and simple, eight to 10. And you should use the eight if it's standing in the field and the harvest has to be done yet and the 10 if it's already harvested. Then uh, I think uh, it shows a little bit of uh, the confusion about this topic because then they say a higher factor is used for lower price corn and a lower factor is used for higher price corn. So that kind of tells you this rule isn't really working perfectly. And then they go on and say, after you do all those gyrations that currently, which I'm actually not sure of the date on this, seven times, which remember that seven is the number of bushel in a typical ton of corn silage might be a better number. So uh, just showing that we're not alone in the world as far as what people recommend for a price of this. Next slide. So uh, uh, can we drop that in the chat, uh, a link to this? Uh, I think uh, uh, Emeritus Greg Blondie, uh, Wapaka County has worked on this for a long time. Uh, our own Ryan Sterry, I think I saw he was joining us today. And Joe Lauer, our corn specialist, as recently as August 21st, put this effort. And uh, since we are the number one corn silage state, we ought to be able to have a better answer than the folks down in Missouri. So here we come up with three thumb rules. And we use a little different range, seven to nine, uh, times the price of shell corn. Um, we also use uh, cost of production. Here we're saying that it costs $635 an acre uh, for an 18 ton yield. And we come up with a, a little lower number as of last August prices. And then option three is we can base it off of the price of baled hay. Well, I offered and signed up for this topic because I like this fact sheet here. I think it's a nice job at uh, kind of explain where we're at in the industry, but I really don't like any single one of those options very well. But you should go to that uh, fact sheet. So there's a lot of more nice information in there, that table on varying by moisture, and also then this uh, table on different levels of maturity. It's a lot of neat stuff in there. We can go to the next slide. So let's look at option one, seven to nine times the bushel price of corn. Basically, we're saying that corn silage is the entire value is derived from the value of the grain, since most of it has seven bushels in. So if you use the nine, you're saying, oh, there's maybe a little residual value in uh, the other components, um, but not much. It's really about the grain. And it doesn't account for any differences in if that fiber is well digestible or not as well digestible, or the same thing with the starch. It just is a number. Um, so to me, this, this uh, is quick and dirty. It gets you close in the neighborhood, but it's a little bit like a broken clock. It's maybe right about twice a day. Next. Yep, next. So then this next one, cost of production per acre or cost of production per ton, add 10% to that. I'm just gonna say briefly, I think corn silage really is a blessing for us in, in many areas of the country that we can actually often produce this, cover our cost of production, add 10% uh, for our margin, for our markup, and, and uh, sell it for a price that our neighbor, the dairy farmer might want. Um, me being involved in the dairy industry, I know this is, a, this is an exceptional thing to have happen. We know that we have dairy heifers born and we have great heifers and we raise them for two years and they're great heifers, but they're worth less than what we cost to, to raise them. Or similarly, uh, we have entire government programs set up on uh, supporting dairy farmers because we're not sure that the milk price will cover their cost of production. So here's one area in agriculture this corn silage pricing scenario where usually this equation, not always, you can find different reasons why it wouldn't be, but very often it's gonna give you the lowest number. And it's this kind of number that 
if you're buying from a cash crop farmer that they might be willing to sell it to you for. And that's a great thing if, if they are, uh, but if they aren't willing, I don't think you should say, well, I can't buy it because I went to this equation and it doesn't meet the criteria. So I, I shouldn't do it. And then I just have a comment there a little bit that uh, there's a fair number of acres of silage specific hybrids. Uh, sometimes uh, I use the example here, BMR will have a yield drag. So they're gonna be more expensive to produce uh, because often the inputs are the same, but the yield is less. So obviously per ton, it's going to be more expensive. And also uh, it may be uh, more expensive because you might be putting more fungicide on it or whatever. So if you have a, and I've dealt with this as an extension agent that uh, a corn grower has a long-term relation with a dairy farmer and the dairy farmer says, I want you to plant uh, BMR corn for my farm. And the corn grower says, well, I have an opportunity cost here. I could get better yields with fewer headaches. I don't want to grow BMR for you. And so the dairy farmer typically would have to pay more per ton um, to sweeten the deal for the, the corn grower. Next slide. And then this one, I really don't like much at all. One third to one quarter, the value of average hay. You know, the plus for this is it does really acknowledge that corn silage is a forage and we're feeding it to cattle, at least of half of it is for the, the, the forage value, the NDF, the, the effective fiber and so forth. <clears throat> but it's got, uh, uh, if you adjust it only for moisture, the difference between dry hay and 35% uh, dry matter corn silage, you wouldn't be discounting it to 25 to 33%, you'd only discount it by 40%. So it's really giving you, and then it's average hay. It's not saying, oh, prime 200 RFU alfalfa. It's saying average hay. So this number gets you in the same ballpark as the other two numbers, but it gives you a kind of a skeptical, uh, it really treats corn silage as kind of a sub-average forage. And then of course, this equation doesn't give you any credit for the grain. So there's problems with all three of these uh, options that we have listed, but it just shows that we've struggled along the way to come up with a quick and dirty, really easy answer on how to price this stuff. Next. So I think one of the reasons why it's hard to price is that corn silage, the fodder, I'm calling it non-grain portion, there really isn't anything like it. Um, depending on the silage is often higher in NDF digestibility than our prime quality hay or haylage. So, you know, we, uh, uh, it's, uh, and uh, Luis, uh, you know, can tell us about this, that there's a lot of corn silage that really has some pretty impressive numbers as far as NDF digestibility. And because of that, it has become uh, one of the main NDF, uh, the main NDF and effective NDF contributors to many modern dairy rations. So we should not be thinking of it as uh, the subpar forage. The problem is, is the stuff runs maybe 8%, six to 10, somewhere low, half or less than half of the protein of that prime alfalfa. And so it tempts us to think of it like ditch hay. It's not. Um, we do have to adjust for that lower protein, but it's, uh, it's, it's really a highly quality fiber as far as digestibility. Next. So just about every dairy farmer in the US gets their copy of Progressive Dairy. And like clockwork, you can go into about the 10th page in, and on every issue, you can see how the folks at the Ohio State University, how they feel about feed prices. And uh, um, this chart here shows that uh, they think that uh, corn silage, uh, give them credit, uh, they just did this two issues ago, uh, that uh, corn silage kind of survey across the country was $52 per ton. That's in that red box. I know you might have to zoom in quite a bit to see that. But they're using a matrix algebra program here 
they're solving for some nutrients, uh, protein, um, energy, fiber, and they're calculating based on all these other prices of all these other feedstuffs, they're calculating um, what they feel you could justify paying for corn silage. And I think they got $79 a ton on whatever the comprehensive index is and $93 a ton for the carbohydrate or the fiber value. So a lot bigger numbers than uh, we are coming up with with these thumb rules. Well, that might be partly because this is 2022 and we're in a time of scarcity, especially in some parts of the country. Um, and if you look right above that, um, it's saying that they got uh, that price per ton of corn grain ground is, uh, that's a $6.94 a bushel. So even though we have high prices, I don't think they're that high probably in much of the country. You have to take a little off that for being ground, but part of those high numbers are coming from uh, uh, that, but not all of them. It's saying there's a, there's a much higher number that we could pay for corn silage if we had to. Hopefully we don't, but if we don't have any, any other options, uh, we shouldn't force ourselves into buying some other things if we're pay because corn silage can be a tremendous value. I'll leave it at that. Next. So you don't have to go to Progressive Dairy Magazine uh, to uh, uh, find out what they think. But when I open that up and look at that, I'm always taking issue, oh, they have this price wrong, they have that price wrong. We at the UW have our own matrix algebra program. And just a little brief word about matrix algebra. That's probably what people are using to do your least cost dairy ration or your best cost dairy ration or commodity brokers are using this to price uh, uh, feeds that are off spec or feeds that don't have a book value. Uh, our program is called FeedVal, and you can go to the uh, Animal and Dairy Sciences website and uh, you can find it. And I'm just gonna take a breath here. Ashley, I, since we had this mishap here that I'm not looking at my slides, I wanted to do that poll already. So let's still do it if we could. Alrighty, you should be seeing a poll question. If you could please answer that, that would be excellent. The question is what drives the value of prime alfalfa hay? Is it the protein, digestible, effective fiber, both or neither? I think we're kind of all over the board. Uh, we said that it's not digestible effective fiber, apparently. It's uh, some said protein and some said both and some quite a few still said neither. And there is not a right answer to this, but I think historically, uh, on many of our forages, we uh, assume alfalfa at its highest quality for protein is also at its highest quality for NDF and NDF digestibility. So we sometimes assume that about other feedstuffs that, that protein is kind of a marker for other quality traits. And I hope we already established, like I said, we're a little bit late on this, but corn silage certainly doesn't follow that pattern at all. It's uh, uh, it's low in protein uh, and the fiber, especially some of the hybrids we have selected for silage these days is, uh, is much higher. So if we go into feed val, uh, Victor Cabrera's name is there first and foremost, but the, the usual uh, nutrition folks there at the Department of Animal and Dairy Science at UW-Madison, you're gonna see on the right-hand side that uh, it looks a lot like what you see in progressive dairy, that it color codes feeds. Uh, when you hit the analyze button, uh, which is kind of in the middle on the left there, if you want to put the pointer there, um, lower, right there, yep. So uh, all the green, pale green areas are areas you can modify. So if you don't like what they have for price of corn gluten feed, it's not your price and you know what your price is. You can input your price or uh, using the corn gluten feed again, if uh, yours is uh, a percent higher in protein, you can go in there and do that price. So this is uh, 
what I think is a big plus. You don't have to argue with Progressive Dairy Magazine. You can go in and put those numbers. But similarly to there, if it's bright red, um, it's saying it's overpriced. Com it, the market price that you had the chance to put in is uh, lower than what all from all the other matrix uh, solving that, uh, what the predicted value is. And if it's green, it's saying it's, it's, a, it's a good value. These matrix programs are, well, they're dumb. Uh, they're very powerful, but they don't know, they're blind, they don't know what they're doing. So if you don't set up all the uh, prices, uh, nutrient values correctly, it will rush and give you an answer that um, discourages you discourages you. And if you look in the middle there on the left, it says remove nutrients with negative predicted unit costs. I don't have that selected here, but what it's showing you is that uh, um, sometimes uh, you'll have a nutrient, calcium, let's say, that you know has a value. You might be spending money to put calcium in your ration, but when it solves the matrix, it might say, oh, it, it costs money to put calcium in. And so you just gotta be careful with this thing. Uh, what, basically you gotta work it several times before you get a solution that you understand what it's doing. Let's go to the next slide. So for corn silage, um, I picked that uh, we're gonna look at the crude protein because in just about any feed stuff, we have to look at the crude protein. And we already mentioned that's kind of a deficiency in corn silage. But since it is corn silage, I don't think we got to get really fancy and also look at the lysine and the thionine. Then I looked at those two key components that we do look for corn silage for, NDF and starch. And then I also selected the NDFD digestibility, which there's two choices on here in the feed value. You can pick TT NDFD or you can pick NDFD 240. I did not do starch today. Uh, starch digestibility. I did starch, but not starch digestibility because I just didn't want too many things flying around. I just wanted to show you how the program works. And often you don't want to throw too many questions at at the same time. So this is what uh, I'm going with here. Next slide. Now this one doesn't look good on my screen either, but I just want to really emphasize the importance of putting in the right numbers. So on the left, do you see a little bit of it? It says that's high quality hay. And the one below it is grass hay. So it's got a book value of 20% crude protein on the high value hay, 14% on the grass hay. It says that the high quality hay is 40% NDF, the grass hay is, is uh, 50. So it's trying to tell you lower quality feed in that grass hay. And if then if you look on the right, it got price per unit, it's we're talking about a $200 product versus a $150 product. But then if you go right in the middle and look at NDFD 240, it flip flops and says, oh, the grass hay is better than the high quality hay. Again, these are just book values. You can put them in however you want. We know this is typically a true thing that that's one thing that grass grasses are good at is NDFD 240. But what I'm saying there is uh, when you go evaluate corn silage, if it's looking and it's trying to find out what the value of NDFD 240 is, and it's going back and looking at what you're doing with hay, it might get confused. So you got you to gotta understand what this thing is doing um, before you hit the, before you say, yes, this is what I'm going to do with. Just one other example here. Just imagine these numbers were um, um, well-eared corn silage at 40% starch and poorly eared corn silage at 30% starch. It's not as simple as just going in there and saying 40 and 30 on uh, two different corn silages and hit the analyze button because we know that if it's high in starch, it's going to be lower in NDF. And so you'll have to also adjust the NDF, maybe even the crude protein values a little bit to uh, get a good analysis out of that. So 
I don't want to say garbage in, garbage out, because you got to work at it really hard to get this thing to work for you. But a matrix algebra program like FeedVal is going to do a much better job for you at getting an answer at what your product might be worth um, than the old thumb rules. Let's just look at some differences in corn silages. So I pulled up the 2019 because I couldn't find the 21 results and there uh, wasn't a contest maybe in 20, I'm thinking. And uh, of the uh, World Forage Analysis Super Bowl held at our own World Dairy Expo here in Madison. And I've highlighted uh, the 30 hour in vitro NDFD and the uh, starch. And this is the uh, standard corn silage. Uh, and you see that, uh, so this is the BMR. And we see that a lot of them are over 70% up to uh, 76% uh, NDFD uh, 30 hour, really high numbers. So building this case that this stuff can be really highly digestible. Uh, but the, uh, the BMRs seem to struggle, not very many of them are over 40. Well, remember, these are all exceptional feeds. They are the top 10 at, uh, at this contest at World Dairy Expo. Now, if we go to the standards, we see that they run a good five points lower in uh, NDFD, but they get a little more starch. So these are the real things that are happening out in the field that I don't think we can uh, really um, address with the old thumb rules, uh, the differing digestibilities and uh, actually using a forage test to come up with how to price your feed. So here what I've taken is uh, just to give you some concept of uh, where our industry sits. Uh, this is, uh, I, I work picked Rock River Lab as an example. These are some things you'll see on some forage tests. So you see on dry matter, it says 15th to 85th. That's like percentile of a uh, what they see come into their lab. So you see that on average, so this is a, a this forage that we're looking at here tested at 36% dry matter. But if you look on there, over a period of time, they've had a 38% average right at the top where the stick would be for dry matter. Cons uh, similarly, crude protein, um, seven and a half, but varies, you know, across the range as we discussed earlier. And here we have NDF and starch. And here, this is uh, what I was talking about back on feed valve. Um, these are gonna vary together. If your starch is slightly higher than average on this one, then your NDF is probably gonna be slightly lower. But I, they have here goal, minimum and max goal. Uh, so you interpret these dials a little bit differently, but on average, uh, a little over 34 is about the average starch that has uh, come into the lab. Now, if you go back to FeedVal and pull it up the first time and you like to say, oh, they got it all right, let's uh, just go with the book values on FeedVal. I think FeedVal is going to come up with a book value of 30 for starch. So you really do need to look at those numbers and uh, not just rely on book values when you do these things. And then they also give you a uh, uh, starch digestibility, seven hour, and TT and DFD, um, which uh, this, by the way, is a very outstanding corn silage. It was kind of mediocre on the other numbers, but look at this. This one is uh, exceeding the goal in both. I should just briefly say another reason I didn't decide to talk a lot about starch today is we know that processing and storage time together uh, can improve uh, a corn silage over time. So if it isn't where you want it to be on starch digestibility today, uh, you might, if you have the ability to leave it mature more in the bunker or the silo, it could get better for you. Whereas uh, NDF digestibility is not gonna be quite as variable in that trait. So we're, we're close to done here, but uh, if you don't like uh, a program like FeedVal that you ask it, nearly the same question three or four times and it gives you um, different answers uh, each time. If you like the idea of thumb rules, here would be a suggestion for, from me on uh, how to price corn silage right now this winter.
So I would use the seven bushels if your corn silage is typical. And right now in our current market situation, um, the value per ton of corn silage of corn is very similar to the value per ton of prime quality grain. You got to look at that year by year. Is there a year when the corn, when the forage price, the hay price is high, but the corn price is low, or the other way around? But right now, this year, they're both high and both in the same range. So I would suggest that you take that seven bushel times the current market price. I'm saying six twenty and take it times two and getting uh, because the, the fiber part, the forage part and the grain part are about equal. And then uh, you, can, you could get this out of feed valve. Uh, you could ask it a question, what is 22% uh, protein alfalfa worth and what is 10%, but keep the numbers fixed as far as uh, fiber di digestibilities. I'm saying take $20 a ton off pretty hefty discount for the stuff not being very high in protein. And you still come up with a number saying that right now the corn silage is probably worth, here you go, $66.80. So that would be, to me, um, you gotta keep on watching this equation over time, but I think ideally you need to look at the starch and the, the non-starch portion of the product and then do a, a discount for protein to me is going to be get you the closest place to figuring out what the price per ton of this stuff should be. And actually, I think that's basically what FeedVal and the Progressive Dairyman Ohio State Matrix Program, that's what they're doing. So again, um, just uh, if you like thumb rules, I'm thinking that highly digestible corn silage can be worth 10 to $15 more per ton. And I'm not saying this is an average corn silage, I'm saying maybe versus below average fiber digestibility corn silage. And so you hear this sometimes that, that we, we covered this earlier that uh, um, it might cost $10 or $15 more to make some of that highly digestible corn silage. So it's a wash, but it's, uh, it's there. It's how you would calculate it. And then also you have that uh, kind of range if you have corn silage that's under 30% starch versus corn silage that's over 40% starch. You're gonna see that we can't just call it corn silage that uh, we'd have a spread there of $15 to $20 per ton. And if it is 40% starch corn silage, I want you to check to make sure that it's not really dry and that it's combined with low quality um, uh, overly mature, overly dry fiber or starch that's hard and unavailable and needs to uh, hopefully uh, spend more time aging in a bunker. Hopefully uh, I've succeeded in showing you my thoughts on what you should do with corn silage. And I'd like you to think of uh, nice weather. Uh, the groundhog uh, saw his shadow. It's too cold for me, but I really am looking forward to another year of corn silage. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Matt. And with that, um, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today on our bi-weekly Badger Dairy Insight Program. In two weeks, we will be hosting the Animal Well-Being Conference, and I backed up the slides, the Wisconsin Dairy and Beef Animal Well-Being Conference, which will be held over in Manitowoc at the Farm Wisconsin Discovery Center. If you are unable to make it in person, you can register for the virtual option as well. So please do that. Um, otherwise, we will be back for our winter um, series, the Badger Dairy Insight, March 1st, uh, talking about the ins and outs of cocktail forage mixes for dairy rations. So again, we'd like to thank everyone for coming today. 